I'm Tom Stoppel, and my wife Nancy and I formed Medical Ministries International back in 1998. We formed it because we had taken trips overseas and had seen the great need that is there overseas. And having worked in the medical field here in the United States, we knew the great excess that we have here. So MMI was formed to become a conduit between the great excess we have here in the States, to pass it through us, let us see what it is, and make sure it's the right thing, and then send it overseas to places that desperately need medical equipment and supplies. So we've been doing this now for about 20 years, and during that time, we have taken six trips to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. A person here in Fresno asked us if we would go on the first trip. In fact, he talked to us a lot about, can you please come to my country and just look? And so we did. And we looked and we saw what they don't have in the Congo. We went to both hospitals in large cities and out in the field, out in the bush, and we saw that their shelves were empty. These were perfectly talented physicians and nurses who were working with whatever they had to work with. And if they didn't have what we would say is, oh, this is the only supply we can have, they worked with what they had. And they reused things that we would never reuse because that's all they had. In one particular instance that I remember that just really outlines not the, the special problem because it's generalized, but it outlines the whole issue of lack of medical care. We were in a, a busy village and the surgeon there had an appendectomy case that he needed to do. And the way they do the surgery there is that he opens a window so that he has light to actually see the area that he's working on. They slid a wooden table, just a regular dinner table, up against the window. And this surgeon performed an appendectomy that day on this patient. He saved the patient's life. But if you look at it from our standpoint, we'd say, oh, that So that just increased our burden for the Congo, for the Congolese people. Because if we could just give them the equipment and the supplies that they need to work better in that environment, then more people would be able to live, be provided, it would totally change the level of health in some areas. So that's what we've been doing. And with six trips there, we have worked in out in the bush, in Kafumba and Malela, out of Cape Breton. We have worked in Kinshasa. And now we are looking at this project that is taking place in Kinshasa. And the purpose of this project is to provide a health environment, a medical clinic and a medical hospital that is available for people who just can't afford to pay for. And so this is a project that is ground up. It's from the very basic level. It's a building that is being built just to house this equipment and these supplies and to start a clinic that will be available to those who simply have to choose between eating and getting medical care. So our project and this shipment is to move a full 40-foot container filled with everything from anesthesia machines, hospital beds, down to basic supplies like gauze and bandages. And since it's a new place, we're also sending waiting room chairs and, and other furniture that you just have to have if you're going to run a hospital. And so I was determined to do whatever it takes to actually start this clinic. We reach out to MMI, Medical Ministry International, a great organization here in Fresno that has been already in the Congo six times. 
and they were willing to send a container full of medical equipment that worth close to 400,000 to 500,000. And so I sat down with some of my friends. We said, we have to build a building so that we can use this medical equipment there, train people to save life. Do you know that out of, out of seven kids, one kid usually dies or most likely dies in the Congo? Do you know that in some of the villages, it's actually one out of two kids that never makes it to the age of five? Many women dies of child complication, childbirth complication because of lack of prenatal care. Do you know that a dialysis is a, a, a commodity in the Congo because to have dialysis done, you got to pay $5,000 cash up front and most people can't afford that. And so we thought whatever it's going to take to build this building, we'll borrow money to make it happen. It turns out that to build a building like that, it only cost us $160,000. But do you know uh, that in this country, we build building day in and day out, building that we don't need, building that we want for additional program, and it cost us million every year, when only $160,000 can build a clinic that will save generation. This is the reason why we do what we do. This is the reason why we started United for the Future, not only to provide mentoring here in Fresno and save lives of many kids that don't have role models so that they don't end up in jail or they don't end up dead in the street, but that we may also be able to build this clinic in the Congo and to be able to save life. And this is where you come in. This is where you can help us. Help us build this building. Help us give out of whatever we have. I remember my parents giving out of their poverty. I know we can do that. This is what made me who I am. And this is the reason why I call for you guys to come alongside and support this vision so that we can be able to save life because every life is worth saving. God bless you.